Hey, what's going on everybody? Matt with Lathrop Media. We're inside Inventor and we're going to be talking about the Revolve tool. Now, as you can see in front of us, we have this like a little faux gear going on or, or axle or well, I should say shaft, whatever you wish to call it. Uh, we essentially have, yeah, we'll just call it a shaft. We have our output, our input, and then a couple gears going on that have not been cut. But we're going to tell you how to go about doing this in the Revolve or while using the Revolve tool set. Uh, you could do this with extrudes, but let's be honest here. You'd have, you know, you'd have to create a sketch and then extrude, sketch, extrude, sketch, extrude, so on, so forth. So instead of, if you looked at your, your parts tree or your model tree over here, and you're doing this as extrudes, you have what, one, two, three, four extrudes, or you could just have one revolution. Basically, what you'd end up doing is you draw a cross section or a half of a cross section, rather, of your part. You know, this blue line going all the way around here. And then once you're done with that, you can revolve it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and create a new standard part. Go ahead and drop our sketch on our XY plane, and we'll go ahead and project our center. There we go. So you can do this however you wish. Um, I like to do it a specific way. It's how I learned. It is really up to you or your company if you're doing this professionally or even your educator if you're still in school. It doesn't, it's not my, uh, it's not my place to say. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to constrain this a little bit. I know I don't need to, but I feel weird. I feel a little dirty if I don't. Now you have to keep in mind that all the dimensions that you're going to be putting in as far as your half of a cross section, uh, you have to keep in mind that there's going to be another half to that when you revolve it. You're essentially putting in uh, for these dimensions here, it's going to be the radius uh, that you're putting in here. So we'll say it's going to be quarter inch radius or a half inch in diameter. It's just something that you have to keep in mind. I don't know how many times, you know, I've either seen somebody, uh, you know, fighting with it and not understanding why it doesn't look right or why it's coming out wrong, what have you. And then it, it either a doesn't dawn on them or B it finally dawns on them that, Oh, I put the actual diameter of my pipe in or my, you know, my gear or what have you. And it should have been, you know, the radius we live, we learn, right? So we're just going to say one inch. It's going to be half inch. I know somebody's probably sitting there like, hurry up already, quit yapping, be done with it. I mean, this is something that I did not have to do, but I did it anyway. So we have our half of a cross section. Go ahead, hit the finish sketch. And we could just come up here to revolve. It automatically selected our closed loop. If it does not highlight the section, it basically means that you probably have an open loop sketch somewhere, or uh, I should say an open loop sketch. One of these points is not touching the other, or one of these lines is not connected to the other. Easiest way to try and put that. Uh, you could run sketch doctor and see if it highlights anything, but usually if everything's closed up, it'll already select that for you. As you can see, we're already selected on axis. Uh, it's highlighted in red. I mean, you, well, I should say it's not already selected. It needs information. There we go. So since it's red, we have to specify what our rotation axis is going to be. You can either pick off of your center point or you could pick the actual line uh, from your sketch. That's up to you. And as you can see, as soon as we click on that axis, it automatically populates our revolution. There are a couple more settings that you could play with. First things first, extents. Uh, it defaults to full extents. You can actually change that to angle to or between. 
generally 98% of the time, I either use angle or fool. Angle is just what it sounds like. Uh, you could split it up, you know, 90 degrees or 270. Uh, whatever floats your boat, whatever you're trying to do, I don't know. I'm not a mind reader. Uh, gives you the ability to flip your direction, keep it symmetrical or keep it asymmetrical. Gives you your starting angle and your end angle, and you could flip that bad boy around. Like I said, I usually either use full or angle. Most of the time it's full, but uh, you can create a new solid. Uh, I'm not going to get into the pros and cons of that. Uh, that that would be a completely different topic, so I'm not even going to touch it. And then you have your output. You have whether a solid or a surface. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't use surfaces very often. I usually, generally, output my uh, my geometry or my created geometry as a solid. So after that, you can hit OK. And there you go. You have one revolution. It's real simple. There's not much to it. But that's basically your beginner's intro to, you know, the Revolve feature or the Revolve function, whatever you want to call it inside of Inventor. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, feel free to drop them in the comment box below. And until the next time, I'll catch you cats later. Ooh, bad exit. Because I know somebody's going to automatically put that together with Tiger King and, oh, God, I hate that show.